Hi, this is Mick Elliott from Electronic Specifier. I am on the Ignion stand at Electronica and I am with Jaap Groot, who is the chief executive of Ignion. Uh, Jaap is going to talk through uh, a new product that Ignion have uh, unveiled at Electronica. Um, yeah, before we get on to that, maybe if you could just give us a little bit of background on, on Igni and the company. Sure, thank you, Mick, and thanks for having us. Uh, it's been a busy day, as you have probably seen. Uh, maybe a bit not noisy, but hey, here we are. Um, so Ignion uh, was basically born uh, quite a, some time ago and started selling chip antennas in 2015. Uh, the first few years we used that to validate the technology, and once we hit the 10 million mark where we thought, okay, now it's proven, we started basically building up our strategy around selling uh, chip antennas that are virtually completely different from what anything else is in the market. Uh, since, let's say, my, my, my tenure with the company since that time, uh, we've been growing year over year with 50% in terms of volumes and revenue, so everybody uh, is kind of receptive to the technology that we provide. But still we believe that we should bring something new, so I'm happy to talk to the, to, uh, about that to you. And you, do you manufacture the products? So no, we are a typical uh, sem semiconductor company, we're fabless. Yeah, we okay. manufacture in three locations, right. uh, also for supply chain resilience. Yeah, okay. uh, but we've had little problems with that. Our lead times are relatively short, 10 to 12 weeks, and the product is not too complex to manufacture, so uh, ramping up is relatively easy for us. So let's move on to the new product. Uh, what is it and what does it do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a good question. Uh, that's what this is about, right? So, um, well, when we looked at the market, we saw that in the antenna market, typically the problem is you have plenty of choice. Actually, maybe too many choice, choices. And that makes it difficult for the design engineers. So we sent R&D away with one mission uh, and actually got some sponsoring from the uh, European Accelerator. So we're very grateful that for that because this, doing this stuff as a, as a small company is not easy, financially speaking. So uh, the, the mission for R&D was very simple. Design the best RF antenna, that you can, chip antenna, that you can find in the market. So we compared with a lot of other products, chip antennas in the market, and basically set the bar very high. Uh, then they went into their kitchen and started cooking meals. <laughs> and uh, the, the second prerequisite was to design a, a product that can support three radios at the same time. Um, the main reason behind that is we have a lot of business in the tracking uh, uh, arena where people build, let's say, products that have cellular backhaul. Mm -hmm. uh, they have GNSS or GPS for location determination and BLE or Wi-Fi, mostly for local provisioning, setting the, the details of the device. So those two ingredients, performance and three radio, were thrown into the mix. And uh, abacadabra, uh, one year later, we had Omnia. Okay. I brought it uh, so we can, we can see it. Yeah. It's actually a, a, fa a fairly big piece yeah. compared to the others. Um, but it, 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 is, it, it does what it says on the tin. Uh -huh. It supports three radios. It takes away a lot of coupling issues. And by the nature of the product, because of the size, it is smaller. So it has a very uh, ecological footprint. Yeah. Uh, because if you otherwise you would need to buy three antennas, which would be expensive, but also use much more uh, material. Yeah. And, mo and takes up more space. Well, yeah, the space in devices actually, uh, I mean, uh, you haven't seen all the device, but look, look at this, right? Yeah. Uh, it's so small, there's normally enough space. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that wouldn't be too much of an issue. It's more the complexity yeah. and the fact that, um, well, these products, all products consume m m material that is scarce, whether it's copper, FR4 is not so scarce, but ceramic materials for sure are. That's why we don't use them, by the way. Yeah. So we try to be a little bit you know, eco-friendly because at the end we need to create a sustainable environment and IoT is, well, one of the drivers behind IoT is exactly that. So. Yeah. Okay. What, what would you pick out as the key innovations in the product? So integration of three uh, radios into one antenna, yeah. for sure, there's nobody else who has that. Yeah. You know, it sounds a bit cocky and, and maybe now somebody will jump when they see the video. <laughs> oh, I have one, okay, <laughs> sorry guys, yeah. then I missed you. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's one and performance. Yeah. Uh, they can bring me any chip antenna uh, and then we'll prove that this part simply performs better than anything else. Okay, so yep, performance better and uh, an IoT uh, performance better as well. Yeah. Well, and the, and the three radios, yep. that was okay. the, the, yeah. the second element, okay. yeah. yeah. So that's how, I guess that's how you demonstrate the versatility, is it, across IoT applications with that integration? Well, yeah, first, versatility is a, is, a, is a nice word to say, but honestly, IoT consists of many, many use cases. Yeah. So it basically means you have many, many different products, yeah. and all these products need typically different antennas. That's yeah. why if you go to DigiKey, you find 100 cellular antennas. Yeah. So if you're an engineer and you see that, uh, I'm not going to say you panic, but at least you're lost. 
So downloading all these sheets and then making sure that you pick the right antenna is virtually impossible. Yeah. The versatility of the products that we deliver, because they are not bound to a frequency, so that um, Omnia part that we just looked at can do BLE, can do ultra wideband, can do cellular, it can do all the frequencies that we like, and we just tune it. And for that, we have our Oxyan platform, which we have launched at Embedded uh, earlier this year. And there's already a thousand companies using that to design IoT products. And in those thousand, we have 3,000 designs, so it means about every company does about three designs. So then you need versatile technical components to be able to adapt to the needs of those individual devices. Okay, and, uh, and what sort of, um, uh, has it been impl implemented into IT devices on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, we, we uh, three thousand designs this year. So th they will not go to market in twenty four, right? They, they go to market in 24, 25, 26. But we actually support about five, twenty five hundred active devices. Mm -hmm. If I look at uh, the the biggest markets where there's the biggest volume for us, it's in smart metering, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, big, big customers. I think out of the global top ten, we service five or six. Okay. Uh, the second market that is doing well, although the deal sizes are a bit smaller, are tracking. And you're talking not about millions of products per year, but yeah. probably hundreds of thousands. Uh -huh. So that is uh, tracking of mopeds, of cars, of uh, well, w whatever you want to track, uh, uh, even down to, to cattle and, and um, uh, kids. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, very adjacent to, to, to uh, tracking is also telematics and, and uh, automotive, because they use it for the same functions. And then the third market that is doing well is uh, healthcare, all kinds of wearables. Uh, that's more in the BLE domain, to be honest, but we're doing quite well there. And will it have an impact on the sustainability of IoT devices? Um, I would say um, IoT devices should be, sus should be driving sustainability, uh -huh. but to make electronics that are sustainable mm -hmm. is, is a, 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 a difficult task. Yeah. Not just for us, we are, we are trying to, but we need copper, we need FR4, yeah. Um, so we're trying to be as sustainable by making the product small and also by making sure that people who design using the platform have fast answers. So for example, if you run a simulation, uh, typically it burns com computer power for 5, 10, 24 hours, depending on how complex the simulation is. We are using AI and ML and we can give the same answers in minutes and sometimes even seconds. So indirectly, yeah. yes, there is this sustainable aspect. But directly doing electronics components that are clean to the world, uh, that's going to take a bit of time for everybody. And Omnia is available now, or with, is it with customers now? Yes, uh, well, we've been field trialing it with a, a launching customer, yeah. so that's uh, been ongoing. Uh, that went very well, uh, so the customer is happy, it's a tracker. A couple customer from, uh, from Spain called Nuba Things, uh, and they can talk about their, you know, their design and how they have implemented it. Uh, we now have about 10 alpha customers and we're looking for a few more to test it, the versatility exactly yes, as you sure. mentioned across all these use cases. Yes. Um, so normally I would say mass production will be after embedded next year. Okay. And that will be available from Ignion and from through the channel distributors? Uh, absolutely. You know, the normal go-to-market for uh, uh, semiconductor and, and, and antenna guys is through distribution. Although I must say that we also start seeing a lot of direct demand specifically for deals which are a bit more complex. Distributors, uh, 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 let's say, ability to support complex RF problems is, is kind of tough. Uh, but if you're buying, if you're building a product and you buy everything from Arrow, fine, you are, can get our product from Arrow. If you buy it from a DigiKey and smaller volume, fine, you can get it from DigiKey. So yes, Omnia is available through the normal channels also. Okay. And, uh, and Omni, I use obviously direct. You offer direct support. New customers come to you, and you can help them with the with, with implementing implementing the product. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have uh, still in the office 20 engineers uh, okay. about. So, so yes, there is still uh, some hand holding required, mostly at the end of the uh, design phase, because when you do the initial design, everything is fine. But when you start putting the casing and the batteries and maybe some potting of the device because of IP specifications. All that stuff has an impact on the antenna, and that's where human brain power often is needed also. And uh, we're at Electronica. What's the interest been like at the, at the show? <laughs> well, it's not like the queue at DigiKey because they gave away free stuff, right? But, yeah. but I can tell you, this morning was incredible. 
Uh, I've had no lunch till today. Well, there's an apple still there for my lunch, but that's it. Um, so I, I think there's appetite. But honestly, Electronica it has the right audience. It has the technicality of, of the people that seek for new solutions. And since this is new, uh, virtual antenna in technology in general is new, yeah. I think there's a lot of interest. Uh, of course, the reality will show uh, in the longer run, when, when the designs start and people start using the products in, in real-world uh, solutions. Okay, yep, Groot, thank you very much. Thank you, Mick, it was okay. a pleasure. Thank you.